Guys, Dr. Mubeen, we're talking about the humoral response of the immune system. The lecture before we talked about the B cells, now we are talking about immunoglobulin. So I think this is a very important lecture uh, and the concept. So let's start. The first thing we would do, so of course from immunoglobulin's point of view, the topic that you should know, doctor as a student, is number one, what are the kinds of immunoglobulins, again for immune side kind of immunoglobulins, what is the structure and structural differences of immunoglobulins, where do they live, various immunoglobulins live in different parts of the body and then finally how do they function. We will then see pathologies of the immunoglobulins, we will see the tests which are necessary for the immunoglobulins and then genetics of the immunoglobulins, what is class switching, what is recombination, what is DNA rearrangement, what is hypersomatic mutation uh, or somatic hypermutation and so on. So let's talk about the structure of the immunoglobulin. This lecture will become the foundation for the function of the immunoglobulin later on. So now structure, the second part will be the genetics of the immunoglobulins and third part will then be the functions. So let's do it. Immunoglobulins are of course proteins that are released by the plasma cells. So again as we talked in the last lecture, uh, active cells and immature and mature cells also have immunoglobulins showing on their surface. But immunoglobulins are released when a B cell becomes a plasma cell and it is actively defending and reacting to some sort of an antigen. So then it is going to be releasing thousands of immunoglobulins per second. So let's talk about it, what is the structure of an immunoglobulin and a simplified structure that we can present here on the board, otherwise a three dimensional molecule. But here to be presentable on the board, we'll make, make it this way. So we have, we have two chains or two pairs of chains, we say heavy chains and light chains. So I'm making heavy chain here. So this is the one structure, I'm going to make one more here and I'll explain in a second what it means. Then we will make one more here and one more here. I'm going to move this line somewhere over here. Okay. So, this structure that we are seeing, this Y like structure, has following components. It has two light chains. Why are there light chains? Because, of course, you see they are smaller, so they are light chains. Two heavy chains. Why are these heavy chains? Because they are bigger. These, this molecule then has segments. You see that I draw some lines in here. It has segments and most of the students or doctors who are listening to this, you are already aware of them. Let us just put those segment with their names. They, there are variable regions, we will talk about it, but the variable, this is the constant or heavy chain and so we say variable region of heavy chain, this and this, variable region of the heavy chain. Why do we call it variable region of the heavy chain? We will talk about it. This is the one which takes part making an, an idiotype or making antigen binding site. Then is the constant region 1 of heavy chain, constant region 2 of heavy chain and constant region 3 of heavy chain. This is a hinge region. It normally is not as big as I made. So let me just make it smaller. This is a hinge region and as you can see it creates a hinge where number one the, the uh, other part is separating out and number two we have disulfide bonds here that connect the hinge region and that is how the two uh, heavy chains are connected with each other. These are proteins. So you know that all proteins have amino end and carboxy end. Do you know which end is where here? So NH3 plus amino end is here. 
NH3 plus amino end is here. Carboxy end is here, carboxy end is here. So, heavy chain amino and carboxy end segments, so we will have the same C1, C2, C3 heavy, so constant regions. Light chain has of course, a variable region and a constant region. What does that mean? Again, variable region will mean it would change. Constant region means it does not change. So, variable region for light, variable region for light, constant region for heavy, oh sorry for light and constant region for light. Cool. So, this is the primary structure. There is small attachment here. COOH. Now, from USMLE point of view, I think almost every one of you, I do not think that any one of you would not get questions about this, this structure. So, let us start looking at this structure, uh, but even before that, let us complete this NH3 plus side here, carboxy side here, carboxy side here, NH3 plus side here. So, amino and carboxy and amino and, and carboxy. First concept, this part, the variable part is called antigen binding site, antigen binding binding site. Why is it called that? This is where, this is where the pieces of pathogen are attached. This is where the recognition of the pathogen parts is done. In every immunoglobulin that comes from every other B cell, this thing is different. So, I think this is the primary concept that must be, uh, must be had that for an immunoglobulin, the antigen binding site is the one that is different from one immunoglobulin to another immunoglobulin. That is why it is called antigen binding site. This is also called, it, so actually this site has further sites in it, small amino acid sequences. These sequences are called hyper, hyper variable, hyper variable regions. they change. That is why hyper, hyper means a lot, uh, you, uh, you know that, variable means changing, region means region, a region which is changing a lot. What is it changing here? No, in one immunoglobulin it does not change. In when you compare multiple immunoglobulins to each other, all of them will have different things here, right. So, this is the hyper variable regions, there are normally three, uh, three on the light side and three on the heavy side every one of these region is made up of 5 to 10 amino acids. Keep this in mind as we start talking about the genetics, this will be useful information. So, every, every one section here, fragment here, region here is made up of 5 to 10 amino acids. So, this is the antigen binding site. The pathogen, so have you seen a plier? So, the pathogen will be held here. So, pathogen will be held here. Now, the rest, the rest is this part is called the constant region. Why? It does not change. You can say as a student and a doctor, you say, well, I know doctor it changes because we have IgM and A and E and D. I understand. But compared to this, where there are millions and millions kinds of, you know, diversification here, this does not change. At the end, you have five types, right? So, this is constant region. This is also called FC, fragment constant. And this is called FAB, fragment antigen binding. So, FAB region is here, FC region is here. You can actually pour papain, papain is an enzyme, papain is an enzyme which when you pour on the immunoglobulin, 
it breaks the hinge regions and separates the antigen binding site from the antigen uh, constant site or the, the constant site itself. Now the FC portion is also called a portion for biological functions. Many properties here, so let us talk about some of those properties. One is that this portion here is responsible for attaching with various kind of cells and pathogens, actually cells. So pathogen binding is here, so why did I say that? Cellular attachment is here. For example, when IgG connects on the surface of a macrophage, so if I make a big macrophage here and I say this IgG is sitting on the surface of the macrophage, it connects on the surface of the macrophage through the carboxy end of the IgG. Macrophage actually has receptors for the FC portion of the IgG. Similarly, mast cells, I think you are aware that IgE sits on the mast cell. So how does it connect with the mast cell? This carboxy side connects with the mast cell. So now let me ask you one more thing. Remember we talked about B cell expressing IgM and IgD on their surface. How do they do that? Their carboxy end actually has a poly A tail. So do not forget this, this is a question. This is a poly A tail that is hydrophilic. Remember hydrophilic things do not like to go out in water. So if there is a tail attached with the FC portion that is hydrophilic, then this part is not going to like to go out of the home. So what is going to happen? This is going to get stuck in the cell. That is why IgM and IgD in, a, in an immature and uh, you know, active cell that do not they only get stuck on the surface. Why? Because the poly A tail does not want to get out of the cell. It is hydrophobic. It hates water. But on the other hand, if you wanted it to get out, to be released, you would see in the genetics, we will talk about it. Then the poly A tail, instead of having a hydrophobic tail, we attach a hydrophilic tail. As soon as you attach a hydrophilic tail that likes water, the, the immunoglobulin will go out in the blood and start moving around. So again, very important thing here, the receptor for macrophage, receptor for IgE and then receptor for the B cell by the formation of hydrophilic or hydrophobic uh, structure here. Then the constant region 2 of the heavy chain, this is a question, constant region 2 of the heavy chain is important for complement, complement fixation. Of course, I think you, you know that this is one of the most important thing to know about the immunoglobulins. Um, complement fixation, why is complement fixation important? We will talk about the complement as well as, and in later chapters, but complement is part of the immune system. And uh, once the complement gets activated, that is how the destruction of the target tissue, may that be our own tissue or, or a pathogen, starts. So how the complement fixation start when the complement attaches to the constant second uh, constant region of the immunoglobulin, mostly the IgG. IgM also uh, activates the complement, but it does not activate the complement directly by attaching to it, but rather it activates it by uh, another mechanism. So IgG actually uh, can activate the complement by directly offering it to be fixed here. So this is also very important and finally, um, IgG, in case of IgG, the FC portion here can have N acetyl glucosamine or it can have sialic acid attached to that. So it is funny for me, uh, the oligosaccharides attached with the immunoglobulins. So when immunoglobulins are formed, we put a small oligosaccharide with them and oligosaccharide is of course a carbohydrate, right? So I think of that as a candy. So we, we make a little immunoglobulin and then we attach a candy on it and we throw it out into, into the blood. So the pathogens come and they say, oh candy and they, then they try to eat it and they get in trouble.